All right, we're live on Facebook and on Zoom. If you guys are watching in the comments, if you can hear the sound of Facebook. Okay, good to go. All right, so uh, we're streaming this on Facebook Live, on Zoom, and on Clubhouse. So hopefully, uh, one way or another, folks can join and follow along. So um, this is going to be done over the next five days. Uh, today was a later start, but uh, we're going to aim to start each day at uh, 1300 Eastern Time. And if you can't join live, there will be a replay in the Facebook group. So um, if you're joining through a Zoom link or you're on Clubhouse, basically go to uh, the Facebook group and list it to Entrepreneur and uh, join to make sure you're able to watch the replay. And there's going to be homework assignments every day posted. So that will um that will help you go through the content and be engaged and also find some answers that uh, you may be looking for okay so today um it's probably going to take about an hour an hour and a half depending on the q a that we get and let's see Okay, so uh, challenge day one, situation. So the way it's going to work is uh, same as SMESC format. It's going to be day one, situation, followed by mission, execution, service and support, and then finally command and signal. So today I'm just going to go over the following. Um, first, I'm going to talk about why I think digital marketing and online commerce are the biggest business and job opportunities of, if not the century, of at least you know this this decade. Um, I'm also going to explain the most popular online business models uh, in more detail, and I'm going to talk to you about why I think veterans are uniquely qualified for entrepreneurship and some of the skills that they already possess maybe without realizing all right so if that sounds good we're going to move on so why am i doing this uh three reasons why i decided to do this i wanted to do this for a long time i don't know if you've uh, read the um materials i posted in the group or even the landing page uh, at enlisted to entrepreneur.com but basically like i wanted to to give back to the community for over three years now, right? It's something that um, they call call for contribution. It's something that um, turns people into mentors or, you know, when I was an instructor in the military, it gave me great satisfaction to pass the knowledge to the next generation of soldiers and see them succeed, right? So like succeeding through others. Um, another reason why is, um, I know that transition is a problem, especially for you know the active duty regular force uh, folks, and I'm in a couple of um, veteran organizations here in Canada. I'm also in a bunch of um, veteran groups on Facebook and LinkedIn, and there's definitely a problem with uh, transition. Doesn't matter to the workplace uh, or starting your own business. There's that. Um, almost like speaking a different language uh, I actually just funny funny thing I just finished a call with a lady who used to be an Olympic uh, speed skating champion for Canada and uh, now she's a vice president at the Royal Bank of Canada 
and uh, some of the elite athletes are facing exactly the same challenging with transition so that was just an interesting conversation that I had um, reason number three is uh, I, working with veterans I think uh, you know I enjoy being in the community I enjoy being in the tribe of like-minded uh, veterans uh, who are also in business and later in this week there's going to be an opportunity to um, work closer with me um, for those who are interested in this so um, you know hopefully this explains why I decided to do this and uh, if you want more details you can just go back into the group and, and reread some of the materials that I posted or read the uh, landing page for enlisted to entrepreneur.com and there's a um, cool little story there uh, but I'm not gonna take too much of your time and just most of you will know me but probably half of the people in the group who just joined this week um, don't so just a quick intro um, so I was uh, born in the Soviet Union uh, 1997 we immigrated to Canada and uh, it was a typical you know immigrant sto story like not a lot of money ran out of uh, the little money that we had um, working typical immigrant jobs for cash uh, you know but no friends but the good thing is uh, I got a computer from from my dad uh, and uh, between other things like messing around playing video games and going into chat rooms I, I actually joined a few forums and taught myself how to code web pages and I wanted to start blogging and whatnot and um, I connected with some people and figured out a way to make money online even back in 1998 actually uh, we're placing some advertisements on websites and then um, we would spam bulletin boards with links so that uh, back then there was no Google uh, it was just like people in, when they wanted to find out about a new website on the internet they would go to um, these bulletin boards and basically um, see what new sites were added so we just basically spam them every day to be on the top and uh, I made a few grand uh, it was pretty cool making a few grand as a teenager and I, I think uh, you know it was better than working on the assembly line or at a gas station but that uh, quickly ended because um, you know that business model was not sustainable so you know I basically um, went the traditional route um, I finished high school joined the military graduated university with a finance degree started working corporate jobs and um, you know um, In 2007, I was serving the, in the military in the reserves. I was working full time on a civilian job. I was also studying for an exam to kind of try to get into investment banking. So it was a pretty rigorous financial exam. And uh, we also found out that you know we were going to have our first child and. I figured that you know I do need even though I technically have two incomes I it's not enough to afford a family in Toronto at the time um, and yeah I was trying to get promoted at work and get a higher salary but you know as a young 20 something it was very difficult to do that so I started looking for a side hustle and just through sheer luck I basically knew some guys that all of a sudden started driving BMWs and you know to go to a bar with a stack of cash I'm like what are you guys doing and they weren't dealing drugs or anything they were actually doing affiliate marketing um, at the end of the day you will know exactly what that means but basically they were uh, marketing online um, and making money and I kind of found a place where they were hanging out online there was a forum um, Again, there was no Facebook at the time. There was no YouTube. It was like forums and chat. So there was this forum where these affiliate marketers were hanging out, and um, 
sharing information and coaching each other and uh, they were focused around what was called lead generation in uh, in UK for financial services so basically it was um, right before the financial crisis if you notice um, they were uh, helping uh, British lenders promote loans and mortgages to um, you know British customers and they were leveraging affiliate marketers to try and get as many leads as they could so um, I basically figured out I know how to build a website so I can build a loan site essentially what it was I, I told it on loan.co.uk it doesn't exist anymore and I just needed to figure out how to get customers into that funnel so um, I had to learn Google AdWords at the time those are the uh, pay-per-click ads on Google when you search for something they appear in search results pretend to be search results but they're actually ads so I learned that uh, just reading some books and talking to people on the forum and I vividly remember the first time I um, I got the first lead so I, I built the website I learned you know how to run Google or so I thought and started spending money on advertisements and I was going from my civilian workplace I just finished a quick workout at the gym and I was walking over to the uh, armory of my reserve unit to change into the uniform for the night and work there and I had a Blackberry Pearl that I bought specifically when I started uh, marketing uh, to check email and I got an email that said right there it was uh, September 3rd 2007 I got a lead a loan lead in the UK and it was uh, 25 pounds at the time so which was about 50 bucks that was exactly how much I made for a night at the reserve unit as a uh, I think it was a master corporal so that was a big shift where I'm like oh my god like I just got something on my phone that is worth the entire night of going and working somewhere in the military I'm like oh my god like, this can really work um, and that was the beginning of like really um, diving into this and you know understanding this yeah you you can make money this is serious so you probably think I like made a bunch of millions right away um, right so I actually lost money I lost five grand that uh, that year so even though I was getting leads I was still unprofitable I was wasting a lot of money on on, on Google Ads and um, yeah at the end of the year after like from September till December uh, I lost five five grand so um, that was like basically my, my corporate bonus at the time and, and then some but the big thing was that I didn't quit um, I was pretty good at analyzing data thankfully to my finance training and I found a couple of things in the statistics that looked promising and basically I leaned into it and next year I made 13 grand on the side um, which was a nice top up that was more than I was making in the military working as a part-time job on top of my full-time job uh, the year after I made my corporate salary on the side you know working in my underwear and it wasn't like you know working on my underwear and by the side of the pool with a cocktail no it was like okay I'm going to bed at two or three in the morning waking up at 6 30 to drop off my daughter to daycare and going to work and then coming back so it was like Gary V says you know you have your nine to five and then you have your five to nine so I was still working I was still serving I was still studying for this finance exam and I was doing this and raising uh, you know a young child um, but you know through all this hard work and sacrifice I actually started making almost my entire year's salary in, in a month and finally got enough courage to quit my Kirshi corporate job which wasn't a bad job I mean I was flying business class um, I was flying private uh, or should I say corporate I was you know doing okay um, work-wise the salary wasn't as high as I needed it to be but anyway so I was still too comfortable but anyways 2011 I was um, 
I was flying from Lima, Peru to San Francisco on the corporate assignment and I was rereading the book called The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss for the second time and um, there's this chapter that says like your brain will constantly find reasons to postpone things that you need to do they'll find oh I'll just wait till this bonus I'm gonna wait till that trip is over I'm gonna wait till Christmas so I literally flipped open my laptop typed in my resignation letter and there was no Wi-Fi in flight back then um, I had to wait till I landed but as soon as I landed I fired off and of course uh, my boss didn't it was, it was a bit of a dick move in, in retrospect but uh, I knew that I had to do it there and then otherwise I would have probably dragged it on for longer so yeah my boss wasn't very impressed with it but uh, you know October 15th 2011 I was on my own full time so I was just over uh, well 10 years and one month ago and of course the, the very next year I got banned by Google from advertising that was pretty scary I was the first low point but uh, I, I managed to get back in it took me a couple of months of back and forth and um, by the way I got banned again in 2015 and got in again but as a side note try not to break the rules that's that's one of the fundamentals that I learned in business so anyways uh, before you get too bored um, you know why I think you could benefit from listening to me is that you know I've learned a few things along the way that I think is going to be helpful to any of you that uh, are going to start a business especially online um, so you know I've been fortunate enough to visit you know Facebook Google uh, won a couple of awards and I was managing now eight figures in ad spend uh, across Google Facebook and a few other platforms over the years um, all right so now I'm going to actually go into uh, you know, st stop talking about uh, my, my backstory and go into the content of today's um, lessons and the first lesson is why I think digital marketing and online commerce are the biggest opportunity right now so um, we are in 2021 we're just you know almost two years into the global pandemic with uh, the COVID-19 virus and without um, doubt you all uh, witnessed what happened with a lot of brick and mortar businesses uh, especially early on you know like when everything stopped and everything got closed you know consumers were afraid and those who weren't afraid couldn't go because everything was closed and at this time any sale was truly a gift right here um, that's a scary thing for a business who has to pay rent who which has inventory employees um, it's it's truly in a bad place to be but as always we evolve and new trends emerge so people do tend to stay home more but they still need things so the internet use basically was record high and e-commerce sales what's called hockey stick was a explosive growth and um, I listened to Nike's uh, CMO and they, they had a plan to be 30% e-commerce based in five years they completed in one that's how big of a growth pattern there was uh, just in one year uh, you can see like everything got trending up searches for milk whatever how to unclog toilet glasses like everything is um has been forced to go online and consumer habits are sticky so when people try something and they like it they have a tendency to stick with it so when they got a taste of it um more and more of them are going to be accustomed to using uh, online to get the things that they want um in our experience you know uh, we started e-commerce in around 2017 so you know before that we were doing lead generation and working with clients and 
other things, but uh, by 2017, we started actually selling stuff online. And one of our first Shopify stores, we hit two million in sales in under two years. So there's a pretty, uh, pretty quick uh, growth, and that just shows you the potential. And that was even before COVID. That was like normal, uh, normal internet use. Um, during COVID, uh, one of our stores basically in one month it was double the sales of the the sales uh, in the same month a year prior, right? So, what does it mean? Well, let's see. Um, here's um, an Instagram post I saved from uh, it's it's a olive oil store in Ottawa. I'll tell you more about it later. But essentially, look what they wrote. Like before COVID, they were 85% retail, forward-facing business. Their online orders were only less than 3%. And then, as soon as they got closed, they they uh, they had to close the physical location. It was all online. They didn't lose any sales. That was mind blowing for the owner and, of course, for anybody else. And this just shows you the power and the potential of uh, online commerce in general, just a small example. And there's data that backs this up. So this is uh, Google done a bunch of surveys and they say like half of the offline businesses already embrace digital. So once you get the taste, like I said, it's hard to let go both for the consumers and for the businesses. Um, and it's all about what is convenient for the customer. Like, it's like Amazon Prime. Like once you know, before you try it, it's like nah, whatever. But then once you are able to get that thing you wanted in one day or less, then it's hard to go back to like, oh, I have to drive for an hour to Walmart and stand in line and look for parking and this and that, right? So, um, thirty-eight percent of small business owners say that online selling saved them. Half of small businesses pulled by Google are going to stick with e-commerce even after this, everything's open. Um, and the adoption rate is still low. So there's still a lot of room to grow. Like percentage of businesses selling online in Canada is only 61% um, this year. UK and US are actually behind. So, you know, it's only going to grow. Um, What's holding them back from growth, from doing more stuff online? So it's, you know, attracting customers is the greatest challenge. They don't know where to get customers. They don't know where to get that, what's called traffic, and they don't know how to convert them. Why is this good for you, right? Because, you know, other roadblocks, not knowing where to start. Started, tried once, lost money. Oh, it doesn't work. It's a scam. They hired an agency, they outsourced, got burned. Oh, it's a scam, it doesn't work. We're going to clear these misconceptions later this week. But the reason why this is good for you is if you learn how to harness the power of online, how to harness the power of e-commerce, when you get those valuable skills, you're going to be able to really be valuable in this marketplace with that set of skills that as you've just seen you know 40 percent of businesses still lack um you know advertising online is a force multiplier like if you have a good product if you have a good offer like it's like pouring gasoline on the fire right like it's the lifeblood of of uh sales online is advertising um now where are the customers online? So this is a little dated slide, but essentially like it's primarily on the properties that are owned by either Facebook or Google. So YouTube, Gmail, Google.com search, it's all owned by Google. If not, if they're on a, some third party website, chances are that the website has ad units that belong to Google called AdSense. Facebook owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp and a bunch of other things. And now there's also TikTok and Snapchat, but like the majority of people online are hanging out here. So if you can tap into even one of them, like you have access to millions and billions of people potentially. Um, 
big question I always get is like, but do online ads work for my business? What if I'm in real estate? What if I'm in construction, insurance, doctor, store, gym? Well, COVID really showed us that yes, almost every business, if you, you know, if you don't, if you didn't go online, you were closed. So it definitely works. Um, and like I showed you earlier, more than ever, people will be spending more time online, doing more Google searches, watching more YouTube, visiting more websites, because they're accustomed to it. It's more convenient. Uh, I mean, there's still a factor of, you know, going local and shopping local and touching and feeling that's not going to go away, but it's, it's not a foreign concept anymore to go and buy something online that you haven't tried. Um, you know, but it, a lot of qu questions I get is, well, isn't organic enough? Like, yes, organic traffic is great and it's free. And that organic traffic means like somebody finding your website through Facebook or Google by themselves and visiting it out of curiosity. Yeah, that still happens, but, uh, you know, the competition can start advertising and steal steal your traffic and another thing is why i like advertising is um it's fast it gives you results quickly or at least it shows you the feasibility of stuff and success loves speed um, so here's some examples like for insurance so it was life insurance and health insurance that we ran and you know we were getting leads for $20 a lead if you know how much regular insurance policy costs or how much revenue it brings to to the broker you can figure out that you know if you can get leads for insurance for 20 bucks that's pretty lucrative um, we did home services the plants repair leads for 10 bucks a lead how much is an average repair of a, a home appliance hundreds of dollars right so each lead is what, like nine ten bucks um, and of course e-commerce selling stuff online um, the point is online ads work for pretty much any business and they will work for yours too like, there's no doubt about it in summary I think digital marketing and online commerce are some of the best and biggest opportunities available today and the key thing is even if you don't think you're in digital you are it's just a matter of time or policy before you get disrupted like you know i was in a room uh, of business owners at a conference and then there was a this speaker from the silicon valley and he said like if you you know if you are in, in digital uh raise your hand up and only a small portion of them raised their hand but then he said well what if you know what if you're a taxi driver what if you're a hotel operator and people start oh shit uber oh airbnb and you you may still be in like in like a brick and mortar industry like taxi and then uber comes around and all of a sudden you are in the digital business you do need an app you do need a website you do need a way for customers to hail hail a cab using their smartphone so this is how even though you think you may not be in digital, you already are or you will be soon. And you can acquire and use these skills to grow your business or help others grow theirs. And the good thing is that it is a lot easier to get started now than five, 10 years ago, right? So like when I was starting, there was no Facebook, like I said, there was no uh, YouTube. There was, first of all, there was not enough information. There were like, nobody was doing this, nobody was, doing these like webinars or courses online that teach you how to do stuff. You had to buy a book and maybe join a forum. That was about it. Um, so right now there's a wealth of information and even if, you know, wealth of tools. Like if you wanted to open an e-commerce store, you had to figure out a uh, hosting, a website, domain name, um, banking how to connect the bank to a shopping cart you need a shopping cart software put it in all together now it's all like shopify just click 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 boom like literally anyone can start a store um two of my friends their wives started a shopify store over a weekend one was selling lingerie and another one was selling cosmetics and they're in business literally just like that 
um, it's so easy but also that means that the barriers to entry are low so the sooner you get in the better because you're gonna have that experience over the next guy who just is getting in after you all right so that is um, the end of the first part and an important note so you know COA course of action as we were all taught um, COA 2 here's the thing I even if for some reason you don't want your own business but you will still acquire a set of skills that are in super high demand right now so like if you through trying this teach yourself a valuable skill those skills are in super high demand in a lot of companies right now like the VP at RBC that I was just talking to she said the same thing there's a war for talent right now especially around growth scale and in corporate speak that means basically <laughs> growing a business especially online right so he here's my parting words for the, the first part of today is if you go into this and even if your business for some reason doesn't pan out or whatnot you will still get this super valuable experience that will make you super valuable um, on the CV street and we all know how transition is a challenge for everyone right so there you go so if you know hopefully you know this is um, useful for you and if you guys like this give me some thumbs up like comment or you know always i'm gonna keep asking you share the group there's still time this week so if more folks can join you know if you like the content if you think it's good if you think it's gonna help more people please uh, invite others who can benefit from it all right so the next part is uh going to be why i think veterans are uniquely qualified for this and uh, we're going to go through some of the skills they already possess without realizing i'm going to check that more people didn't join through zoom all right so remember how i showed you the olive oil store from from ottawa so this is uh mike george mike is a um, special operations veteran and he owns this store in ottawa that's his passion you know gourmet foods and olive oils and um look um, what he says the biggest thing is to have that resiliency and to not succumb to the craziness of things but to take a step back make a plan and execute that plan so you already saw the challenge that uh, Mike had with his his business when uh, COVID happened, but um, he was able to persevere and he's got a thriving business. Um, I'm going to give you more examples of people that I know who are veterans and have started a successful business online. So here's another um, veteran, Corey Shelson. He's uh, he's from Barrie, Ontario, and He's got a digital marketing agency called 44 North uh, between London and Barrie, two offices. And they were, um, I forget the place, but they were basically uh, on Canada's fastest growing companies list for last year. It was, a, I think it was an officer in the engineer corps. So here's another example of a veteran who created a digital marketing agency business. So let's see what's next. Uh, some other um, people that I know or friends of mine so Arrowhead Coffee it's a specialty coffee company that was uh, also started uh, by a member of uh, Canadian Special Operations Community while serving and then I believe it got sold to a member who retired uh, and he is currently um, still running that business and you can check out the website it's check out their Instagram and they're, they're doing well they're, I think they employ like over a dozen people and they don't have any physical locations so it's it's all uh, it's all online right then um, 
fired motor apparel so that's um there was a i think the msc op in edmonton and just over a year and a half ago when everything got shut down for covid he got stuck at home and instead of playing video games and eating doritos he started messing around with shopify and uh, some print on demand and basically started selling t-shirts around motorcycling his hobby and then got some success there and then he man arranged uh, to get some custom thing manufactured uh, overseas with leather and stuff and he was able to quit his job i mean his his military job two months ago to do this full time right and um Aussie Peelback, that's a company that I met at a tactical trade show just in September, and it's actually a current serving member, and even though the name is Aussie, it's, it's, it's a Canadian company out of Petawawa. They uh, sell uh, basically first aid uh, special um, you know, IFAC kits, and they're doing extremely well as well. Like, guys had a booth at a trade show, it already tells you something, and it's all through online pretty much. Uh, online sales across Canada, US, Great Britain, Australia, and New Zealand, all over the world. A um, couple of more examples of uh, friends of mine. Uh, they're not military per se, but this is um, Jason Smith. He was a LAPD uh, gang cop basically for 15 years and basically fighting drug wars in South LA. So, like, Compton and all the you know rap videos you saw that's that's where he was operating and getting shot at from AKs and shotguns and then he figured out that he was a little bit creative and became a Facebook agency uh, owner and has been doing it for all six years now running Facebook ads for clients uh, another friend of mine he was a detective and uh, the Australian police force and he basically uh, made four million dollars in sales in his first year and I met him at a conference in Vegas and I think they were doing 20 million a year uh, selling apparel um, and he had contracts with Disney and basically you know, doing really really well and he said that yeah that being a detective really helped him because it's the same thing interviewing people uh, figuring out what they want what they need and like learning more about them um, that was one, one of the policing skills uh, that helped him in his e-commerce journey amongst other things uh, okay so going back to to uh, military so here's a person I don't know him super well but I spoke to him a couple of times he's an artillery uh, guy in the US Army and this black here that actually it's called the two comma club x award from click funnels that means they've generated over 10 million dollars in sales so that's one of his businesses at selling flagpoles 10 million dollars and you know pretty pretty remarkable um going back to canada this is uh, another friend of mine uh, jeff uh, in london ontario i think he um he became, I think, number two re realtor in London. He's got 10,000 subs on YouTube. He's got thousands of followers on Instagram. He's basically built his entire business on the back of his social media presence. And I know he uses Facebook ads to sell houses. Um, so basically leveraging the internet uh, heavily. And you can see this post that a lot of things he learned in the military and being you know, an NCO and a member of close, close protection is basically you know accomplish the mission at all costs figure out how to cope with lack of resources you know all of those simple things one thing he told me that uh, what made him successful initially is that um, simple things like being on time he said he beat half of his competitors by simply being on time to the appointment with the seller or the buyer because the others would be just late and miss out just simple simple basic things um, so with that again some of the skills that we have 
that we take for granted you know our military values like duty loyalty integrity courage like a lot of uh not a lot but some people in business they don't have the integrity they uh, they um are okay with cheating people out of their hard-earned cash we are not like that we have integrity and that speaks volumes when somebody's talking to you they can sense that we have a sense of duty and loyalty right so loyalty to the team to the customer to the client um, and we have the courage and means we can do hard things and not be afraid and not be afraid of failure then a lot of us were if not leaders we were followers and we're exposed to observing good leaders and some of the principles like self-improvement um, in a business like that which evolves like every day you, you got to stay on top of things so continuous learning like same thing as learning a new drill or a new weapon system or uh, you know getting ready for a new mission that was never done before like that's something that we do uh, timeliness I already mentioned to Jeff and just being on time to appointments you know um, teamwork uh, eventually you will grow outgrow just being you solo operator and you will need a team and this is when teamwork and leadership uh, skills will come forward and many 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 more um, skills now the personality traits veterans have is discipline so you know discipline is what a, a lot of civilian business owners and employees struggle with like we tend to not have that problem as as bad as they do like getting out of bed in the morning or getting things done when they need to be done uh, physical fitness like simply just being more fit can allow you to operate longer to go on on four hours of sleep like I did that other people are not going to be able to tolerate physically if they, even if they want to um, I mean again another thing on discipline and physical fitness a lot of those business courses that I see like when people pay thousands of dollars to go to a seminar or a course they talk about like well you got to wake up in the morning and make sure you drink two glasses of water to hydrate I'm like what like really like that's your business advice and I mean for some people yeah like they don't know that but for us it's like second nature or you know well you gotta wake up in early in the morning and do your work and well isn't that what we do anyway um, so a lot of things that we were taught or that we have like innately ingrained in us people pay money to to hear from these like gurus and coaches to like tell them basic common sense stuff um, resilience re it's a big thing like you know obviously dealing with st stress operating under duress um, it's hard on a lot of people and they, they break whereas we um, we can withstand more and especially like the whole thing around dealing with failure you know that's what stops a lot of people is fear of failure or failure itself whereas we are through our training constantly exposed to situations that put you into you know, put you into fear or designed to to make you fail so you know how to deal with that um, it goes a long way uh, adapt and overcome you know do more with less like how to operate with limited resource I bootstrapped all of my businesses which means it was just my credit card there was no outside capital there was no loans there was no nothing um, a lot of people are not that resourceful and sacrifice like we all join the military to be part of something bigger and to be ready to sacrifice and we sacrifice a lot of time and um, you know some sacrifice more but a, a lot of you know quote-unquote regular folks they, they they're not okay with leaving the comfort zone they can't sacrifice the Friday night out with the boys to work on their business right uh, we I, I like to think as veterans have have been accustomed to that more delaying gratification and sacrificing something to achieve a mission to achieve a goal now with that said so some of these same traits can hurt us in business and here's how so like 
I can do it all by myself mentality, right? Like, I'm hard, I'm very bored, you know? Like, well, okay, but eventually you cannot do it all. You will burn out or you will stifle your growth by not not delegating, not asking for help or not, you know, not asking for help in, in the form of mentorship of like how to get to the next step. Like that's that's one of the things that I think we have that can hurt us. Another thing is uh, that zero quit mentality that a lot of veterans have. It's great to have to not quit, but also it can hurt you in the sense where you, where most people would stop we can keep going just because of our nature but uh, i'm gonna quote jocko willink uh, here that they asked him at a conference i was there his uh, stance on the zero quit mentality he said well yes i do preach never quit but here's the situation you and your squad are assaulting uphill on a well entrenched bunker and there's one burst and two guys are down. Next burst, two more guys are down. Are you gonna keep going? If you are, two more bursts and then you're all dead. Yes, you never quit, but you also did not complete the mission. The right thing would be to stop early, assess the situation, and then figure out another way of completing the mission, such as calling an airstrike, breach team from the engineers, armored vehicles, whatever. So that that is uh, how the zero quit mentality can bite you in the ass and another thing is like you know things that we talked like mission team self uh, first of all yeah you got to take care of yourself uh, <laughs> um, if you want to last in business but also um, one thing that I realized is that you know employees are not troops so um, it's not as easy to get everybody like rally behind the uh, the mission or you know be part of a team because a lot of folks that just want to you know get a paycheck and go home at you know 5 p.m and not think about it so that may be challenging for some veterans is like how do you not like share the same values as because we, we're not from the same background right um that is uh, another thing so i'm sure there are more but just some something in my experience that i would recommend to watch out um in summary, I believe military veterans have so many qualities to help them excel in business. They just don't realize it, and you all have it in you too, for sure. All right, how was that? You guys enjoying this? Make sure you uh, share. Make sure you comment and like the video. Um, you know, we need more more folks who can benefit from this joining. But um, I'm going to go into the next part of the presentation, the last one for today. And this is where I'm actually going to um, explain the most popular online business models and tell you more about their pros and cons. So um, without a lot of hesitation, here are the um, so there are multiple online business models, but here are the three that I can talk about because I have experience with, right? So um, the three of them are affiliate marketing. If you remember in my backstory, I, this is how I started. Uh, marketing agency and e-commerce. So I've done all three of those. Affiliate marketing is essentially you're helping others promote their products or services for a commission and you can either do it directly with the advertiser or the, you know the owner of the product or service or through something commonly called an affiliate network which is essentially an agency that acts as an intermediary between you as an affiliate and then the owner of the product or service that you are promoting um, so um, the pros of affiliate marketing. So it's a low barrier to entry and very easy to start. You don't have to worry about fulfilling the product or service. Your job is just to pre-sell it and drive traffic. Essentially send visitors to the offer, the product or service that you're promoting. 
and the client the product or service owner takes care of everything else the delivering the product or service customer service billing refunds returns all that um, the cons to this business model is that because it's low barriers to entry it's relatively high competition especially depending on the type of product or service you are promoting like if you get into something like promoting insurance um, you will face fierce competition whereas if you go into something more niche likely you will not see as much competition uh, all right all right thanks dave requirements to start so essentially like you're you're either paying with money or you're paying with your time right so in this case you definitely need either or both time and, and some money for ads and you need some skill you need some skill to understand the market that you are going to be promoting products or services in how to pre-sell position the offer and you know skill of how you're going to send people to that offer how are you going to drive traffic so you need a couple of skills um, but in general your job is to figure out what unique angle or message you can wrap the offer around that's going to be different from everybody else in the market so that people you are sending to this product or service are going to have a higher propensity to, to take advantage of that so basically you're figuring out different ways to advertise and promote something that others are not already doing otherwise you're not really bringing anything new to them to the marketplace and it's uh, it's not going to be as successful so it's it's basically like being this like guerrilla marketer for somebody else and helping them supplement their existing marketing efforts with your own unique spin on it if you will so does that make sense all right um next business model is uh, basically you are going to be a marketing agency or slash service provider what it is is you basically are um, helping others with your skills usually it's retainer based so affiliate marketing usually you're based uh, on commission it's almost like being in the commission salesman online whereas uh, with an agency service provider typically it's retainer based or like my agency we work on performance so we actually are working based on commission based on the results we generate uh, but if you have a skill or a set of skills that is useful for others to help grow their business and it could be any number of these things so you know if you're good with ads any kind of ads ads on Facebook Google TikTok, Snapchat uh, if you're good at writing emails if you're good at writing um, if you know how to do social media marketing search engine optimization uh, right now very hot is video like people need video a lot right it's a big new opportunity or even graphics like making a graphic design web design or development or CRO conversion rate optimization which means they try to make their website convert better sell more and then another uh, area uh, that is hot right now is analytics and tracking like it's a way for um, companies to analyze the data that they get from all the, the visitors and make sense of it so it's another hot topic if you equip yourself with even one of these skills and you become better than average at it you're definitely going to carve yourself um, a nice spot online and you can start seeing that some some things are overlapping like the same skill that can be helpful in affiliate marketing such as for example my initial skill was google ads and web design let's say so those two things put together i made a website i placed ads on google things started working leads started generating i started making money so same skills you can apply for yourself as an affiliate or you can sell your skills 
as a agency service provider, right? Um, some of the pros of an agency model is a relatively low barrier to entry, but um, it's also potentially long-term income or even a brand asset. So like. The thing with affiliate marketing is, let's say you're pr helping somebody promote their thing, you know, you sell, sell this on their behalf, and then tomorrow they decide, you know what, I'm not gonna sell this no more. And then you're out of business and you have to find the next thing to promote. Whereas if you have an agency, first of all, you can sign a client and they can stay with you for three, six, nine months, a year, three years. I had, I had some clients that were with me for eight years, you know. It's great long-term and also you can build a name for yourself, you can build an asset. Like if, if you've ever heard like any of the big Madison Avenue agencies for in the traditional advertising world, like Ogilvy and Marshall Mathers and this and that, um, Saatchi, Saatchi, whatever, DNB, they were all the built, the, the agency is their asset, it's their brand. So like if you become good and you become famous, that's what you can achieve here. Um, cons again, uh, because it's relatively low barrier to entry it's high competition like right now there's a lot of people who watched a course read a book and now they're Facebook ads agency and I mean it's a whole different discussion but definitely um, a lot of people are lured to this world and um, they crowd the marketplace a little bit all right uh, and another thing with the agency it's a like a friend of mine he owns a couple of eight figure companies a uh, long time ago he asked me like what do i want to do and i said well i want to build an agency he said well agency sucks because you need to scale with people and now i understand what he meant because it definitely is a challenge in itself because uh, eventually you're going to grow outgrow yourself and then you're going to need to hire and that's a whole new set of skills that you need to unlock in order to source hire manage and lead people and then fire them um so that's something you need to consider when you choose the business model. Uh, the requirements, primarily, um, it's, again, a set of skills, your time, and eventually it will be human resources, let's call it. <laughs> but uh, requires very little, I guess, investment to, to start. You just need to acquire a skill and then sell it, find, find clients to sell it to. And then the next one uh, that I can relate to is e-commerce, right? So that's selling your own products or services directly to the consumer. Um, and you can then break it down into different little um, departments such as drop shipping, where you sell other people people's products. It's actually kind of like affiliate marketing, if you think about it. Uh, you just make the sale and then the fulfillment and everything is done by them the people who manufacture the product um, sometimes um, like a few years ago it was really popular like you buy something on eBay and then it actually comes from a warehouse it's not like somebody selling it out of their you know bedroom it's literally they just make a listing on eBay but it's some big you know let's say furniture store that actually <laughs> sends the furniture to you even though you bought it on eBay um, white labeling is the next step where you sell products that other people manufacture but you make your own brand right so like uh, or private labeling so like it's for example uh, very big in supplements so you can go to a factory that manufactures supplements literally in white bottles that's why it's called <laughs> white labels and it's the same let's say I don't know like turmeric and I can have mine like Greg's turmeric and then you can have your own like raised turmeric and it'll be the same thing just with a different label fulfilled from the same factory um, they'll send the goods to you under a different brand and then the highest level in my opinion is branding and developing and selling your own product so it could be that you manufacture something uh, you make some custom designs that you can sell on Etsy or you know you have some designs for t-shirts or flags or you make your own gadget or like anything really um that's the highest level because it's your own like no one can copy you uh, and i'm bundling digital products and coaching also kind of under e-commerce 
technically you could argue it's a separate category, but just for simplicity, you can sell a digital product such as an ebook or a course or something uh, through very similar um, process as selling a physical item. Um, so the pros are again relatively low barriers to entry um, and it's also potentially long-term income and brand asset like if you create a valuable product you can trademark and patent and whatnot it's it becomes a brand or um, a lot of brands were kind of started uh, as e-commerce like if you look at uh, recent examples like the gymshark apparel like it's a completely um, 100% e-commerce company. They have no physical stores, but they're like, uh, I think they're valued at a billion pounds now um, or high nine figures. Um, and then the uh, movement watch company, uh, MVMT, they were sold to Movado for 300 million or something. Uh, completely 100% internet e-commerce company. I think watches manufactured in China just created a cool story behind them, a cool label cool brand and turn it into this worldwide known phenomenon just some examples that everybody knows um, the cons are it's relatively high competition again depending on where you are but like uh, it because it's fairly easy to get into it it's naturally going to create competition and e-commerce out of the three business models that i described has the most moving parts so you're not just concerned with how to sell the thing but you know how to make the thing how to send it to the customer and then deal with their issues like uh, customer service returns refunds this and that and also at least after the initial process you're going to have to hire and scale with people so that's another challenge where um, you do have to build a team in order to grow further like there's only so much that you can do by yourself uh, requirements are hard so you need uh, skills time eventually HR you will need probably a budget for ads or highly recommended and you need a budget to actually buy the product and manufacture it um, not always but you know if you drop shipping you sell first and then pay the supplier later uh, but if you're making your own thing you're gonna need to pay for designs for molds for prototypes and then you know it will require somebody so it's got probably the, the highest uh, requirement for for time and budget and also the amount of moving parts there is now what about other business models you may ask well I have some knowledge of some of them so Amazon FBA so that's selling on Amazon I mean Technically, that is e-commerce as well, but I know little about it. Like we have uh, two brands that are uh, that I own, but they're also on Amazon. But it's more like an afterthought, so that somebody sees my ad on Facebook or on Google, but they, for some reason, prefer to shop on Amazon. They go on Amazon and find it there. But it's not like I'm Amazon centric. There, I know people who are making, you know, seven, eight figures just doing Amazon, and that's all they do. I'm I'm not those people, but I know them. I know of them. And uh, we've done a little bit of Amazon ourselves just on the back end of our e-commerce businesses. Um, there's also uh, content creation. So like you can be a YouTuber, you can launch a podcast, create a membership site or paid forum, essentially what's called uh, being an influencer. So um, I have really not been involved into that. Uh, this is probably as much content as you see me putting out. Um, some people make a business out of it. Like if you're naturally good at writing or on camera, you have a lot of things to talk about or discuss or you know how to bring guests. Um, like, you know, you've, you've all heard about those YouTubers who like seven year old kid opens presents, makes 13 gazillion dollars. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not a way how um, I know people are making money online. And don't get me wrong like if you if you own a brand uh you will eventually have to drift into content creation like i am creating youtube videos for my agency now uh, it's not my primary thing but it's something that helps put my brand out there elevate it and make sure more people know about it so eventually you will graduate into some sort of content creation but that may not be your own thing like if you are you know 
you are a YouTuber and that's all you do, like uh, Logan Paul. And another thing is um, apps, themes, software, SaaS, software uh, online. So essentially, um, it's part of the internet business. So you can create a useful app or utility software or a theme for WordPress or, for, or apps for Shopify. Some sort of provide some sort of a utility to a person or a business online. Um, I have not been involved into this business other than helping them by being uh, an agency or an affiliate for them. Like I've promoted a shit ton of apps or software um, before on behalf of my clients and partners, but I've never owned one. I know I know a couple of guys who were very successful launching their own software. I know one guy in Poland, he he sold the company for a hundred million dollars. It was a business to business uh, tracking software, right? So remember earlier I said, tracking is an emerging hot topic in on the internet so he created a special type of software that was useful for businesses grown it and sold it for 100 million um, again i've only been on the marketing side of this not on the development side but that's also something that you can consider if there's a problem that you can solve with a software solution or an app you might as well um, look into that so um, there are many business models online and like I demonstrated, they do overlap. So like if you have a skill like copywriting or sales, it will probably be useful in any of those capacities, right? Uh, if you are, if you have a skill in, um, or, you know, you, you can be almost like an affiliate for your own product. So like it, it fluctuates and it overlaps so it's not like you're you pick one lane and you always stick to it even i in my business like we do agency we do affiliate we do e-commerce all at once and it's like a little ecosystem another thing is remember i said earlier that we we have that flaw where it's like i can do it all myself so one big thing is um a lot of these like even with the agency right like you don't have to do it yourself like if you're good at sales, let's say, and maybe like one or two things, you can outsource other things um, and find people who will do it on your behalf. Like I see it a lot where people like uh, go into Facebook groups, for example, where Facebook marketers hang out and they go and like, I need a Facebook ads rock star because I just closed two clients and I need someone to actually do Facebook ads for them. So the guy who sold the service doesn't know how to do Facebook ads. He just knows how to sell. And maybe other things, like maybe he he, um, he does a website. So he sold a website and Facebook ads. So he was gonna do the website, but he needs a partner to, to do Facebook ads for him. So that's um, another reason why you don't have to be good at all of these skills yourself. You can partner with people and complement each other without competing to uh, have a successful agency. Like uh, last month, I inadvertently sold a $3,000 Shopify store to a, a customer. I went to a trade show, I got a business card, I looked at their website, it looked like crap. I did a little five minute video saying, well, I would change this, this and that. They're like, can you help us? I'm like, currently we don't do it, but I know somebody who built websites for us. Would you be interested in a referral? They're like, yes. And I refer them and they basically it ended up a $3,000 deal just like that. So I could have technically said, yeah, we'll do the website and basically let the same service provider do the website under my umbrella. And uh, that would be totally legit, right? As long as you can vouch for the person who's going to do the fulfillment, that they're going to do it up to your standard. That's all fair game. So that's a, that's not a big moment for me. Was that like you don't have to do everything yourself. You can partner up with people without competing, complement each other, and leverage each other's expertise to uh, do you know good for your client. All right. So um, that is all I had scheduled for today. So we're just, you know, we're now in 15 minutes, uh, kind of batch through the content. Hopefully you guys found it useful and I hope I, I was able to communicate the value that veterans bring into civilian 
workplace or into the business workplace and why I think you know online is got a big place in the future like if, if it's not the future it's, it's got a big place in the future and if you want to be part of it you can with the skill that you got already you just need to acquire a few more skills so um, there's gonna be some homework for today some exercises that will help you get started with unlocking what is the right path for you like focused on your skills and talents and passions and interests that um, can give you hints on what you could be doing next um, with your business so thank you guys who were able to join on zoom facebook and if you're on clubhouse make sure you uh, find enlisted to entrepreneur facebook group and join because um, that's where majority of the action is happening uh, make sure you guys uh, share this as much as you can this week it's not too late for others to join replays will stay up in the group indefinitely indefinitely <laughs> Um, and the homework assignment will be posted shortly after this live session ends and um, tomorrow's session is at 1300 Eastern again in here on Zoom and Facebook Live and Clubhouse uh, does anybody have any Q&A you, um, you can ask on Zoom or in Facebook comments if not we'll uh, stop it here and issue the homework and see you guys again tomorrow all right um thank you and session one ends